I'm not always the most receptive person when it comes to boxing books. There are dozens that I simply ignore, burn or hurl at people. It's my choice what I do with the garbage. But every now and again, a book comes along that I like. A nostalgic look at a century of boxing by Adam Powley is one that I didn't like the sound of, I will be honest. Well, I was wrong. It has some stunning pictures and sensible writing. There are one or two classic lines, and I mean classic. Adam Powley has gone and found pictures that are nearly familiar in some cases and outright original in other cases. Some of the John Conti stuff is, is amazing. It's beautiful. I spoke to Adam earlier, and I started by asking him how he went out and found such fantastic pictures. Well, the, the benefit I've got, Steve, is that I've done some books before with uh, Mirror Picks, so I know uh, my way around there. So you'd seen, been inside their library, so to speak. Inside their archive. is yeah. for, for anyone that works in, in sports journalism or publishing, is an absolute Aladdin's cave, because mm. you, you're going into a place that's got... 100 million pictures yeah. and uh, a fair few of them are about boxing mm. you're going through old boxes and old glass plates of stuff and it is just an absolute treasure but, but you've still field. you've still uncovered pictures i mean some of the pictures. i mean you know they're, they're pictures that are semi-familiar so obviously taken by the same photographer on the same day the other pictures which we've all seen of henry yeah. cooper and muhammad ali and john conti but you've yeah. managed to just dig a little bit deeper and some of the stuff, I mean, the picture on page 44, 45 of Cooper's smashed to bits, cut up and, and bruised eyes, yeah. I mean, that's the best picture of Cooper's damage I've seen. And I did plenty of obituaries recently when he died. Yeah. So, I mean, that, but that picture kills them all. And the picture of John Conti in the shower with the beer after losing a Matty Parlov, I'll be honest with you, those two pictures alone is worth the price of the book. Well, it's very kind of you to say that, Steve. But, I mean, that, that's the thing, because... You know, when, when photographers went on the jobs, obviously they would be taking rolls and rolls of, of things. Of course! There'd only be a couple of image, actual images that would make it into the paper. Cool. Now, lots of stuff they took wasn't suitable, but years after the event, you know, that stuff comes out and it's so evocative. Oh, man. It tells so much about what was happening on. I mean, exactly that. That's the kind of thing I was looking for when I was going through the archive. To get out those pictures that you haven't seen before. To see people, in a way, with their guard down, almost mm. literally. And just to get a different perspective on on what they are actually going through, even, you know, surrounding fights that we know so much about. Yeah, and, and that, that, that's the hard thing. I mean, is, to, is that if you're doing any pictorial book, is you can either leave your brain in or take your brain out. And you've obviously left yours in and gone out and dug up stuff. I mean, there's some fantastic stuff, I think, of Roy Shaw in his underpants weighing in. Yeah. And some even better stuff of Lenny McLean fighting in the cheapest pair of high-tech trainers I've ever seen. <laughs> so here's the hardest man on planet Earth wearing 699 trainers when he's about to kill somebody. Well, I don't know about you, but that just had me... I was, it was about 30 times I laughed in this book. Not, not least, not least, let me just tell the listeners that you did take a very in joke on one of the pictures. There's a, a group of brothers called the Affleck Brothers from Scotland. Yeah. And they are officially the ugliest group of men ever. They are the ugliest, ugliest, ugliest group of men. I, I'm telling you, they may have been decent fighters. Rab wasn't bad. So, so, so what's happened is that Adam's managed to find a picture of these four ugly brothers. I mean, they are absolute mingers. I mean, they're unbelievable. The ugliest men in the world. I think, is there four or five of them, Adam? Uh, I think there's about five of them, actually, oh, which are standing with their dad as well. Five, so. five of them, five, there's five of them in the picture. Yeah, three sets of twins. So they're in this picture, right? And he's got this caption, Adam's got this caption about the Afflecks, and he says, and of course, uh, Rab Affleck went on to have a very successful career in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> now, I read that the first time, and I didn't quite get it. And about four pages later, I went, oh, no, he's just dropped a cracker in on me. <laughs> he's just Ben Afflecked me off. Well, I'll tell you what, so that's it now. So we've got John Conti, knackered, drinking beer in Yugoslavia. We've got Henry Cooper, the greatest picture of eye damage, and the Affleck joke. There's your, there's your 1899. Worth, <laughs> Adam, was there anything as you were going through that sort of shocked you? Because, I mean, you know, you really uncovered some sort of brutal and basic stuff. Was there anything that sort of did not shocked or disturbed you a little bit as you were researching it? it? Kind of when, well, what the beauty of doing boxing pictures, it, it's the perfect medium for sports photography because you've got these two, two guys in a pool of light in a boxing ring, surrounded by light and darkness, you know, the mm, crowd yeah, and the stadium around them. So the focus, the actual kind of, uh, and it's sound like I'm getting very uh, highfalutin here, but the composition of the pictures is fantastic. They really, they're really dramatic. They really yeah. tell the story. And it's actually looking at some of the older ones. I mean, we're going back to, you know, around the First World War time and everything, yeah. where you've got these, these shots and it's, 
the quality of the picture is oh. so good, and you can see the streaks of blood on it. Oh, well, so I'm going to ask you about that. There's that terrific picture of that guy on the floor being knocked out really early on at the uh, the old stadium club, and he's on the floor, and the the canvas is filthy, filthy yeah. with blood. But yeah. it's an even better one than that. It's when uh, let me th- let me get this right. It's when um, oh shoot, it's when one of the heavyweights make, make Tommy Farr makes a comeback. Yeah. And the guy on the floor who he's knocked out, the guy from Holland, 1950, okay? That's right. The guy on the floor, he'd obviously been bleeding a lot, and the blood, had, they'd stopped the blood, so it had dried on his leg. And you yeah. can see, like, tide marks on his shins, the blood that's been running down his entire body. And then you yeah. look at the rest of his body, and you realise that the blood's just been smeared and moved around. So there's an unconscious man on a blood-stained canvas, uh-huh. smeared completely from head to toe in yeah. blood. It yeah. doesn't get any grimmer than that, does it? It doesn't. I mean, it, it just it's just that moment frozen in time of the kind of, you know, the very brutal reality of like what, what boxing entails and everything, you know, and it's kind of uh, just just goes to show how, how brave these guys are for what but, they do. Exactly, but there are also some fantastic, they're also lovely pictures. There's a great one of Ken Buchanan outside a gym in, uh, in Los Angeles, and there's also one of my favourites in the book is uh, Conti, Stracy and Bugner. I think it's taken in Henderson, in a place called Henderson, which is in Los Angeles. Sorry, Las Vegas. Uh-huh. With them all standing with Henderson Police Department shotguns with their feet, like, um, on, on, on the front grill of a sheriff's car. I mean, it's just brilliant stuff. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, I mean, that's the kind of really evocative pictures. You know, the, the photographers at that time were brilliant. People yeah. like Monty Fresco at staging oh, yes. photographs, and they got the right look, the right image. And the boxers were great as well because they were willing to do it. You know, they were they were showmen in their own right, and just the two things combined makes and, for and they also were, pictures. And they weren't bothered about looking like like dog's <laughs> dinners either, were they? Now, listen, Adam, just tell us again where the, is the book's available now? What's it called? How and how people can get it? It is now. Yeah, it, the book is called When Boxing Was Boxing: yeah. The Nostalgic Look at a Century of Boxing, and yeah. uh, available, you know, the, the old line in all good bookshops and, and online as well. And some of the bad ones too, I would have thought. Uh, well, yeah, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I mean, you know, I've sold books in there. <laughs> Listen, Adam, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Just quickly before I let you go, because you've you've had two minutes more than you meant to have. Just tell me this: What's your favourite picture in the book? <sighs> Hard to name one. I, I think it's going back to to the early days. To be honest, there's okay. a um, a fantastic shot of um, again at the stadium club, and it's uh, a guy called uh, Fred Fulton uh, fighting his opponent Gordon Coghill, and he's just knocked him out, just spark out, and he's lying on the canvas. Mm. The referee's moving into moving to the neutral corner, and I think it just if that's you want a moment, kind of like frozen in time, of like what boxing about that? That's it. That's when boxing was boxing, a nostalgic look at a century of boxing, 1899, written and uh, put together by Adam Powley, who's just been on the line now. Adam, thanks very much for your time. Thanks very much. It's a good book. It's worth looking at. It really is. And if you're listening again to this, go on to uh, Google and find it. It's a bit pricey at 19 quid, but there are some seriously good pictures in it. You're listening to Steve Bunce on B103.